Hey, this is Ben from TechLockdown.com, and today I'm just going to summarize the book, Your Brain on Porn. If you're someone that's having a hard time quitting internet porn, this book is a really useful resource. If you personally don't like the idea of even thinking about quitting internet porn, this book actually might convince you to do that. In this video, I'm just going to summarize what the book says, but if you want to look into the sources or the research behind the conclusions in this book, you should purchase the book that's written by Gary Wilson. You can also read the summary of this video, which I've linked below. In 2008, people on the internet hypothesized that internet porn was causing sexual dysfunction issues in their own lives. The main basis for this hypothesis was that people were noticing that they didn't have any sort of uh, erectile dysfunction issues when they were viewing internet porn, but they had performance issues with real-life sexual encounters. So this caused some people to completely stop watching porn to see if that's what, what, what their problem was. And many of these people reported that the issues they were having previously were completely reversed. In fact, some people were even reporting that they no longer suffered from depression and social anxiety and that they noticed in increased confidence and feelings of fulfillment. A year before I quit IP, I'd even gone to see psychiatrists and psychologists who diagnosed me with severe social anxiety disorder and depression and wanted to put me on antidepressants, which I never agreed to. Today, on my 109th day of a streak, I feel happy, confident, social, smart, capable of meeting any challenge, etc. Now, at the same time, there was also reports of people that were trying to quit porn but were completely failing to do so. This motivated some researchers to start looking into whether or not porn was addictive. In 2008, it wasn't really common for a boy or a girl below the age of 13 to have seen pornography. But by 2017, this number increased to almost 70% of boys and 23% of girls. And in 2017, almost 40% of boys reported that they viewed porn on a daily basis. One of the biggest questions around this subject is whether or not internet porn is addictive or if it's just a compulsive behavior. Today, we know that internet porn users frequently show the characteristics of addiction. The first one being the inability to quit despite negative consequences. Another characteristic is tolerance, where internet porn users become tolerant to the material that they've been watching, so they escalate into more extreme genres. Another key characteristic of addiction is withdrawal. The negative things that happen in your, in your brain or in your body that are quieted down when you engage in your addictive behavior again. There's some observable brain changes in internet porn users that are consistent with the addiction model. The first observable brain change is called sensitization. When you're sensitized to something, it means that you are really reactive to whatever that thing is. In the context of addiction, it helps explain why you might have really powerful cravings that are triggered by something. On the other hand, the other brain change that can be seen is the inverse of sensitization, which is desensitization. And this basically means that you're less receptive to something, and then it takes more of that thing or something different to get the same response. Desensitization is one of the reasons that long-term internet porn use inevitably leads to progressing into more extreme genres that you used to find disturbing. Another observable brain change is dysfunctional prefrontal circuitry. This ultimately results in weakened willpower for every part of your life. The last observable changes in the brain have to do with a malfunctioning stress system. The result of a malfunctioning stress system is that the absence of the addiction can trigger anxiety, depression, irritability, and other mood swings that can cause you to go back to the addiction. In the example of smoking, withdrawal would be feeling stressed or anxious and craving a cigarette, and then when you have the cigarette, you feel like those emotions go away. There's also an addiction assessment test that many people use to self-report whether or not they have an addiction. The first part of this test is whether or not you have craving and preoccupation with the addictive thing. The second is loss of control in moderating the extent of the behavior that you're engaging in. And the third is negative consequences resulting from the behavior. Based on this assessment test, one in three men in 2016 self-reported that they were addicted to internet porn. Porn addiction is largely a modern problem, and it wasn't a pr an issue that was widespread before the internet. When I entered the murky world of IP, my brain had found something it just wanted more and more of. I was out of control in less than six months. Years of mags, no problems. A few months of IP, hooked. Recall from earlier that the brain becomes desensitized to familiar things. The internet makes it really easy to get around desensitization because you can just find content that you're not desensitized to. 
even the act of discovering this unique content that provides a even bigger rush to your brain is part of the reason why internet porn is so addictive. There's a few interactions in your brain that are hijacked to drive the addiction cycle. The first mechanism is dopamine, which ultimately drives motivation and the absence of dopamine can make you feel apathetic about something. The second mechanism is CREB, which is the reason that you become desensitized to something. It's because CREB inhibits dopamine so that you are apathetic towards that thing that you're used to. And the last thing is Delta Foss B, and this is your brain's way of remembering dopamine producing activities and associating them with triggers. These mechanisms can work together to help prevent you from doing binging behavior that is ultimately bad for you. Now the issue with these mechanisms is that they can pretty easily be overridden when you have access to variety. This was pretty clearly observed when researchers studied the mating behaviors of rats. When a male and female rat are placed into a cage, the male rat will mate with the female and then lose all interest in her. When a new female rat is introduced into the cage, the male rat is motivated to mate with her. If you remember from earlier, dopamine drives motivation. And in this case, the male rat wasn't getting a spike in dopamine in response to the familiar female rat, but the new female that was introduced into the cage resulted in a, in a big spike of dopamine. As you can imagine, this is even more pronounced when it comes to something like internet porn, where it's effortless to find this endless novelty, and you will always be able to find this big spike in dopamine that motivates you to keep repeating this addictive behavior. Even though internet porn can be addictive, most people aren't motivated to quit until they find out that they have some problems that are caused by their internet porn use. One of the biggest issues linked to internet porn use is sexual dysfunction. Issues like erectile dysfunction used to really only affect older men, but now it's becoming really prominent among young men. One of the reasons that we know that internet porn use can cause sexual dysfunction is because urologists who are usually looking at physical below the belt issues that might affect sexual function have been successful in prescribing internet porn abstinence to treat sexual dysfunction. There's also thousands of self reports of men that have managed to quit internet porn who are able to regain normal sexual function. And in this case, it's pretty obvious that there's some kind of correlation. Another common report is inability to orgasm or delayed ejaculation during sex. This kind of sexual dysfunction usually is a precursor to full-blown erectile dysfunction. Another really common issue that's correlated with internet porn use is mental health issues. If the porn user has sexual dysfunction issues, this can be a huge source of stress and anxiety. Also, a lot of people escalate into content that used to be disturbing to them or might not even match their sexual orientation, and this can be extremely stressful and anxiety producing. Porn addiction can actually directly cause depression, and this is because of that brain mechanism called CREB, which is supposed to desensitize you to the same stimulus. But this can also dampen your brain's response to other everyday activities that should be bringing you some kind of enjoyment. And just like with sexual dysfunction, one of the reasons that we know that mental health issues are linked to internet porn usage is that when many people quit porn, they report that their mental health issues that they had previously either were substantially improved or were completely eliminated. I never looked forward to much of anything, dreaded going to work, and never saw socializing with friends and family as all that great, especially in comparison to my porn rituals, which gave me more pleasure and stimulation than anything else. With the addiction gone, little things make me really happy. Staying off porn really makes a difference. I thought it was impossible to quit porn to the point of contemplating castration and suicide. Here's one thing I actually didn't know that helped me out. People who view transsexual porn do it because of all the stimulation, and even the producers admit that they make this fetish for a straight audience. My thoughts that I might have been bi gay were more of an optical psychological illusion. Another issue that is fairly controversial, but it's been correlated with internet porn use, is content escalation and sexual conditioning. Because of desensitization, a lot of internet porn users escalate into more extreme content or content that produces elevated anxiety levels. This can cause some people to develop sexual tastes that don't align with their sexual orientation or are ultimately really disturbing to them. I'm tired of hearing, you like what you like from people. A lot of the things I look at I don't like. I just can't get off to the normal stuff anymore. I never thought I'd want the girls sing on each other, and now it doesn't do it for me anymore. 
One of the things that researchers have discovered from examining porn addiction is that the same principles that apply to uh, pa Pavlov's dog, where he conditioned the dog to salivate at the sound of a bell, actually can also apply to sexual taste. If you are dealing with porn-induced sexual conditioning, there's a very high likelihood that once you stop watching porn, those sexual tastes will go away as well. The only way to treat issues caused by internet porn addiction is to quit watching porn. The first part of this process is referred to as rebooting, and this involves completely eliminating internet porn and any kind of substitute that's similar. You should be really strict about what you consider to be a porn substitute. Even something like Instagram is something you should completely avoid when you're rebooting. You should also be really mindful about what you're thinking about and avoid mentally fantasizing about porn you've watched in the past or any kind of fantasy. Even though internet porn is something that you should completely cut out of your life permanently, most people set a goal of three months for their reboot timeline. After you reboot, a lot of people recommend focusing on rewiring, which is basically resensitizing yourself to physical connections and prioritizing real life physical connections. Most internet porn users don't know that they're addicted until they actually try to quit. And this is why there's a lot of online forums and communities that are focused on helping guys quit. The first thing that you should understand is that there's withdrawal symptoms that you might go through if you're trying to quit a serious porn addiction. So common self-reports can be things like irritability, depression, fatigue and insomnia, brain fog and the inability to focus. And one of the most common and devastating withdrawal effects is the flatline, which is kind of this complete loss of libido. After a few days of brain tantrums, cravings, I went into a flatline for weeks. Basically I felt totally indifferent about girls. It was like somebody just pulled the plug on whatever machine provides my sex drive. No libido at all. Withdrawal symptoms are used by your brain to get you to come back to your addiction. Because when you go back to your addiction, usually these withdrawal symptoms go away temp temporarily. But if you manage to actually push through this period of withdrawal, you'll actually permanently get rid of these symptoms and you won't have to go back to your addictive beha behavior to manage them. Some tips related to recovery. Uh, the first one is that you should keep in mind that recovery is not a linear process. You're going to have days that are better than others, but ultimately over time, you'll notice that a lot of these symptoms get resolved. The first thing you should focus on is kind of cleaning house, which basically involves you going through all your technology and deleting anything pornographic you have and then set up a porn blocking system so that it's really difficult for you to access porn on the Internet. If you want help developing a really robust and effective porn blocking system, go to techlockdown.com. Another recommendation is to actually rearrange furniture in like your home office or your bedroom where you, you typically engage in that behavior and change the environment so that the same cues are not as easily associated with your addiction. Another thing you can do is to focus on using your technology in less private spaces. So if you have a home office, it can help to just have your home office in a public space in the house if you live with other people. Another thing you can do is work in public spaces like coffee shops, or in my case, I actually rented an office for a few months. Another important thing to prioritize is building alternative sources of dopamine because internet porn is previously providing extreme sources of dopamine and you're now losing this. So you need to get your brain to switch over to the healthy sources of dopamine. There's a few common examples of this exercise, accomplishment, creativity, and spending time outside are all great ways to get healthy dopamine. Another really good one is social interaction. And this can be as simple as just being in public spaces like a library or bookstore or a coffee shop. Or you could even go further and go to group events that have some kind of structure where it's less anxiety provoking if you're someone that isn't incredibly social. So churches, meetups, uh, Toastmasters, these are structured events. Another important thing you should focus on is breaking some bad habits. So one really important habit you should break is any kind of activity that is generating excessive amounts of bad dopamine. So like spending long amounts of time on the computer playing video games, binging on junk food or endlessly using social media. These things produce dopamine and they're also very addictive and kind of have similar qualities to 
internet porn addiction in terms of what's going on in your brain. You should also be really mindful about the things that you are, the, the content you're consuming on a regular basis and really limit any kind of anxiety producing or stressful content. So the easiest source or the easiest source I can think of is just limit how much news you're paying attention to and really limit your time on social media. So there's also some habits that you can build that will really help you out. Uh, the first one is related to tracking your progress. So you can do this with a day counter or a habit tracking app, and you can even journal about the progress. You should also try to develop a habit of regular exercise, even if this is something as simple as just going for a, a walk outside. You should also change the type of content you're consuming on a regular basis to focus more on positive and motivating things rather than the anxiety and stressful things that we talked about earlier. Another habit that some people recommend is taking cold showers on a regular basis. And this is supposed to help boost your willpower and also help with regulating emotions. It's also helpful to understand that the desire to watch porn is not always triggered by sexual things. There's a lot of non-sexual cues that you should understand so that you can avoid them. One day I am browsing when my parents decide to go out. When they close the door, something clicks in my head. Suddenly, a big desire for porn pops into my mind. I was turned on by the closing of a door. That was the first time I realized that parents leaving home is a trigger for me. Now, every time my parents leave the house, I go out for a walk, call a friend or just stop using my computer and do something useful. There's a few common patterns when it comes to these like non-sexual cues. One of them has to do with kind of overindulging in things like caffeine, sweets, and carbs. Another common trigger is actually using websites that have endless content. So websites like YouTube and Reddit, where you can endlessly scroll and find new things. These actually trigger really similar addiction pathways to internet porn. So it's really best to try to limit access to these things. Another thing you should avoid doing is using your smartphone before you go to bed at night, as this is a really common trigger for people. So it's really helpful if you put your phone in another room to charge at night and don't bring it in the bedroom with you.